Welcome to the fourth part of recreating the game Seraph's Last Stand. Last time we have added some upgrades, so I jumped straight into adding some graphics to those upgrades. So I went to the game Wikipedia, I have stole some graphics from it and edited it in the most professional software, which is the Microsoft Paint. And then in the Visual Studio, when I have the upgrade class, I have just added sprite property for the sprite of the upgrade. Next, in the part where we are setting up all of the upgrades, I have just added the sprite and I need to load the sprite from the resources folder. So make sure that in the assets you have resources folder and in this folder you have all of the sprites for the upgrades. First, I was doing the resources.load and I was trying to cast it as a sprite, but there is actually a better way. You can just declare the type that you are trying to load. So you can just put the sprite into the less or more brackets and then just type path to the file. And also we need to initialize the upgrade variables in the start because there is the resources that load and we need to run it in the start. Next, I wanted to make the card itself look a bit better. So I have added some graphics so it looks the same as in the original game. And with that, I also had to make some minor changes in the code where we are setting up all of the upgrades, but I needed to change only the indexes because I have changed the structure of the card object itself. So here you can see how the code should look like. And now we can see it in the action that I can select the upgrade. It has the right name, description, and also the sprite. And when you are selecting the upgrade, you probably want to stop the game. So I use just the time that time scale. And when I want to stop the game, I set it to zero. And when I want to run the game, I set it to one, pretty simple. Next, I wanted to implement some of the upgrades. So I have just added the bullet size for the bullets of the player. Next thing is the critical damage. I was originally trying to do it using a boolean, but I figured out that it would be better using an integer, which would be just defining the percentage of the damage. So if it is on 100, it is normal damage, and if it is more, it is the critical damage. So we need to define the critical damage. We can do that just by taking the critical chance of the player, then generating random number from 0 to 100. And if the critical chance of the player is greater or equal to the random number that we generated, then we can deal critical damage. So we just set the critical damage integer to the value of the upgrade of the player that corresponds to the critical damage. And then we need to define the damage by how much we want to damage the enemy. And this is the damage from the player multiplied by the crit damage divided by 100 because it is in percent. And then we can just subtract the damage from the health of the enemy. So all of that stuff is happening in the enemy AI script. Next, I implemented another feature, which is just the shooting speed, pretty easy. Just change it in the player script in the cooldown. Another thing that I wanted to change is the spawning of the enemies, because sometimes even in the first wave, you could have the level two enemy. So this was pretty simple. I just ask if the wave is less than certain number. If this is true, then we set the enemy index to zero, which is just the level one enemy. Then else if the wave is less than another number, in my case it is 10, then the enemy index can be any number in range from zero to two. To make the game seem a bit more alive, I wanted to add some pop-ups that when you hit the enemy, it shows the damage that you dealt to the enemy. So I have created just a text mesh pro text, created prefab from it and added animation, which is just shrinking animation. So it is just making the text smaller to the zero. And now we need to do some coding. So I just instantiated the damage text prefab, which is the object with the text, set it to kind of random position. I just take the position of the enemy and add to it some random number. And I do the same thing with the rotation. Then we can set the text value to the damage that we dealt to the enemy and destroy the object after the animation has finished. And another thing that I added is that just if the crit damage is higher than 100%, which means that we dealt crit damage, I just change the color of the text. But this on its own is still not going to change the position of the text over time. So I had to create a new script and add it to the text object. In this script on start, I just defined target position, 
towards where the object should move, which is just some random position. And then in the update, I am setting the position to the vector3.lerp and then I am inputting the target position, the current position and just some number. Just a quick reminder that I can also teach you individually anything about Unity, Bolt or C Sharp because I just can't fit all of the information into these videos or I can also help you with your personal projects or with the features you are trying to implement. So feel free to reach out to me and we can have an individual lesson. One hour lesson costs 10 euros and is on Google Meet. Now you can see that when we hit the enemy, it shows the damage that we dealt and it is also slowly fading away. And the last thing that I implemented are the souls for which you can buy the permanent upgrades and they are being dropped by the enemies. And for this we need to edit some code in the enemy AI script. So if the health is less or equal than zero, then we need to generate a random number from 0 to 100 and if this number is smaller or equal to the drop chance of the souls that the player has, which is one of the upgrades, then we can just instantiate the soul drop prefab, which we'll make soon, at the position of the enemy, then destroy the enemy. Then I have created the soul object, added a box collider and rigid body component to it. I also added it into a separate layer, which is the soul orb, and then went to the project settings, that way I can edit the physics to D, that way the souls are not interacting with each other. Then I obviously make a prefab from it and assign it to the enemy prefab. And we obviously want to be able to pick up the souls, for this we will edit the player script. Here we have already created a on trigger enter to the void, so first we have a if, then we will need to create else if. The collision game object is on the layer, for me it is index 7, then we can just pick up the soul, but because I want to save the number of the souls that the player has, I am using player prefs for that. On the start I am just checking if in the player prefs we already have a key soul orb, and if not, I am just setting it to 0. By the way, if you want to learn about player prefs, you can just check one of my videos. And then in the on trigger enter to the void when we are actually collecting the soul, I'm just setting the int in player prefs to the orbs plus one. I have added more effects to the game and I think it looks decent now. So stay tuned for the next videos where we will implement the more interesting updates such as some lightning bolts, the fragmentation and so on. And please let me know down in the comments what you think of this new video format idea because I have actually done all of the changes in the game, recorded it, then edited it and now I am making voiceover for that video which is already edited. So tell me if you think that this is better or worse. Also if there is anything you would want me to teach you, let me know down in the comments, don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye!